second week in a row, we have another vaccine authorized by the FDA for emergency use. I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about the similarities and differences between the two vaccines. I also want to address some of the rumors I continue to hear about the COVID-19 vaccines and hopefully give you some encouragement on why you should take the vaccine when it's your turn. Go over some of the common rumors that I'm hearing about why people don't want to get the vaccine or why people might be afraid of the vaccine and then talk about reasons why you should get the vaccine including why the vaccine is much safer and much more effective than getting COVID-19 itself. And then finally, I wanna update you on some of the distribution plans that have started to take shape over the past week. We're still in the initial rollout of the Pfizer vaccine and starting next week, we'll see the Moderna vaccine rolling out to healthcare workers and long-term care facilities. But the next group is gonna be a much larger population and we're gonna to have to have some fine tuning to the distribution details to ensure everybody gets the vaccine. And then finally, I wanna provide a little bit of an update on the distribution plan that is starting to take shape around the country. We've known for a while that the first individuals to get the vaccine were to be healthcare workers and residents of long-term care facilities. Those immunizations are underway and will continue likely for the rest of the month. But as we get into January, there's a whole new group of people that's gonna be a much larger group of people that we're gonna to have to vaccinate. And within that group, we're gonna to have to have some stratification to make sure that those who need it the most get it first. And those plans are starting to take shape. So I'll let you know what I have seen about those plans. But first, if you don't mind, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for future updates. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about what are some of the similarities between the two vaccines. Well, first off, they're both made almost identical in that they are both messenger RNA vaccines, teaching your cells how to make antibodies to the spike protein that the coronavirus uses to enter your cells. This is how we're gonna get immunity from the virus. They're also both required to be frozen, although the Pfizer vaccine does require a much colder temperature for storage than the Moderna vaccine does. They both require two doses, although there is some difference in the length of time between the two doses. For instance, the Pfizer vaccine requires a second dose 21 days later, and the Moderna vaccine requires a second dose 28 days later. They both are very similar in their efficacy, which means how well do they do their job at preventing you from getting COVID-19. The Pfizer vaccine is 95% effective and the Moderna vaccine in their trial was shown to be 94.1% effective. That's pretty close in my book. Okay, so where do they differ just a little bit? First off, they differ in the Pfizer vaccine was actually authorized for use in individuals 16 and older, whereas Moderna only requested authorization for those 18 and older. Now, I can tell you that trials are ongoing for children all the way down to age 12, and I'm sure trials will start soon on even younger age groups. But for now, the Pfizer vaccine goes down to age 16 and the Moderna vaccine will go to age 18. There's also a little bit of difference in the published data on the efficacy in those over 65. While the Pfizer vaccine showed similar efficacy across different age groups, the Moderna vaccine did show a bit of a lower efficacy in those over 65. However, they note that this may be due to the study design and the fact that those over 65 did not get significant amounts of disease in their trial, making it a little bit more difficult to determine the true efficacy of the vaccine. This may be due to the fact that those over 65 tend to adhere to the public health guidance a little bit more stricter than other age groups. We'll have to keep watching the follow-up data to see if this really remains true or if efficacy is similar across the age groups, just like it is with the Pfizer vaccine. One of the other differences between the two is actually how much vaccine is in each dose. So the Pfizer vaccine uses 30 micrograms and the Moderna vaccine uses 100. You would think that with the higher dose, the Moderna would get a slightly better efficacy, but this wasn't seen in the trials. The other differences are, of course, the storage requirements. 
Pfizer vaccine requires a much colder temperature to be stored at, which will hamper distribution just a little bit because the facility that stores the vaccine will have to have an ultra cold freezer to store it. The Moderna vaccine simply requires temperatures seen in common freezers that you have at your home. So it will be a little bit easier to be stored and distributed. So as you can see, there's not much in the way of differences between the two vaccines. And frankly, given the scarcity of the vaccine right now, if you have the ability to get one of the two vaccines, I would take it because there's really not that much difference between the two. Now, let's address some of the rumors out there about the COVID-19 vaccines and hopefully put these to bed once and for all because frankly, some of them are just crazy outlandish statements. So the first one that I heard just for the first time the other day that I almost fell over laughing about was that there was a microchip in the vaccine and it was gonna be used to track you. That's absurd. I'm not even sure how that got started and supposedly it was attributed to Bill Gates and some comments that he made. There is no microchip in the vaccine. In fact, these vaccines have very few components to them. They don't even have any preservatives in them. But to say that there's a microchip in the vaccine that's gonna track you is just absurd. Um, there's no microchip in the vaccine, I promise. The other one that I heard recently was that the vaccine can cause sterility in females. I did actually do some research on this one and apparently it was started by a disgruntled Pfizer employee, but through all the research that's been done so far, including animal studies, there's no effect on fertility for females. Now, neither vaccine has been sufficiently studied in women who are pregnant or hoping to get pregnant. So you'll wanna have a conversation with your physician before taking the vaccine if you fall into that category. It's also not been studied in women who are breastfeeding. So again, talk with your physician before you take the vaccine if you're breastfeeding currently. I discussed this one in my previous video as well, but the vaccines have not been rushed. The technology used to make these has been around for over 10 years. And the process that the vaccines have gone through to get to this stage of emergency authorization have included rigorous safety and efficacy trials, just like any other vaccine or drug would go through. So. If you're curious more about the safety, check out my last uh, vaccine update video for more details on that one. Another one that is out there is that the vaccine is going to change your DNA. Now I can understand how that one might get started because it is a messenger RNA vaccine, but the messenger RNA molecule does not get inside the nucleus of the cell and has no impact on the DNA of your cell. In fact, the messenger RNA molecule is so unstable it doesn't even last in the body for more than five minutes. That was one of the scientific breakthroughs that had to happen in order for us to use this vaccine was there had to be discovery of a transport mechanism to keep the messenger RNA stable enough to get it inside the cells to encode for the protein that is needed to create immunity. There's been some recent concerns about individuals having allergic reactions and if you have allergies, you shouldn't get the vaccine. That is simply not true either. Now, one of the things that, again, if you're someone who's highly allergic to multiple different substances, you're gonna to wanna to have a conversation with your physician before you get the vaccine. There have been a few well-published news articles recently regarding individuals who have gotten the vaccine and then had a fairly severe allergic reaction. This was bound to happen with the hundreds of thousands of people that are ultimately gonna get the vaccine. That shouldn't be any cause for concern or cause you to not to get the vaccine. That's why there is a mandatory 15 minute waiting period after you get the vaccine to ensure that you do not have any allergic reactions to the vaccine. So why should you get the vaccine? Well, let's talk about how the vaccine differs from getting COVID-19 itself. As we've established, the vaccine is safe, it's effective, and can prevent you from getting severe disease. Balance that against getting COVID-19 itself where you have a 1% chance of dying, 20 to 30% chance of it ending up in the hospital, and up to a 30% chance of having prolonged symptoms. I think I'd take my chances with the vaccine any day. If we compare those statistics with what we know about the safety and efficacy of the vaccine, to me, it's a no brainer. I'd go with the vaccine any day. And frankly, hopefully, as long as the stock arrives as it should, I'll be getting my first dose this week. All right, lastly, let's talk a little bit about the distribution plan. So again, we know right now healthcare workers 
and residents of long-term care facilities are getting the vaccine as we speak. The next group is going to be a much larger group and there's going to have to be some refinement to that distribution model. I'm getting a lot of questions every day on when can I get the vaccine? Who's going to be next? How's it going to be done? And frankly, we still don't have a lot of those answers. I can tell you, as is shown on the screen, is there is going to be some stratification to who gets it next and when. Now, like I said, the next group is a huge group of people, over several millions of people across the country. And there's not going to be enough vaccine available, at least not right at the onset, to do all these individuals at once. So we're going to have to follow this strategic plan and identifying those who are going to benefit the most based either on their risk category or on their likelihood of being exposed to the virus. Now, how those people are going to be vaccinated, where they're going to go for it, that's still being worked out and each individual state is going to have a different plan based on their state health department's recommendations and who they've set up to be vaccinators. So, all I know is what's going to happen in the state of Missouri, and even that is still a little bit up in the air as far as who's going to actually be doing the vaccinations. We know right now it's hospitals and some of the pharmacies that have contracted with the federal government to take care of the folks in the long-term care facilities. How we're going to hit the next groups of individuals still remains to be seen. I would suggest that you either pay attention to this channel, because I'm sure I'll have another video update on that, or contact your local health department or some of your local healthcare facilities or even reach out to your own physician. But keep in mind that if you're reaching out right now, they may not have a good answer for you. It may simply be check back with me in a few weeks because this is a fluid situation that's literally being updated on a weekly basis as we understand how many doses of the vaccine are actually going to be available, how they're going to get distributed, and then how we're going to get individuals vaccinated. This is going to be a huge undertaking and it's going to take cooperation from all involved, both those doing the vaccinating and those getting the vaccine to be sure that we get it out to the right people at the right time. I hope this video has helped explain some of what we know about the two different vaccines, helped uh, get rid of some of those rumors that are out there, and I hope helped reassure you that the vaccine is safe and effective and that you should get it when it's your turn. All right. Remember, as always, be safe out there.